conch piercings. What you should know before getting one done. Coming up next on Consultations by a Piercer, episode number three. So you want to stick around. For those who are new here at the Body Piercing and Tattooing channel, welcome to the channel. Hope you're enjoying the videos, but you may not know who I am. My name is Devo. I'm a professional body piercer and have been since 1994. I own and operate the Axiom Body Piercing Studio, located right here inside Skin Kitchen in the fabulous city of Des Moines. What we're going to talk about today is the conch piercing. It's an ear piercing located in that conch or the bowl area of the pier of the ear, done at an angle to match the curvature. Usually done with a labre stud or a barbell. Yes, these can be done with rings, but I don't advise it. They should be done with a straight labre or a uh, straight barbell. Now, uh, average healing time on these is anywhere from three to six months. However, everybody heals at a different rate. And this piercing can be a grumpy little little gus and can take much longer to heal, up to a year in some cases. What you're going to need to do during that period of time is use sterile saline spray on it twice daily. Personally, I like Nelman's Piercing Aftercare that comes out in a fine mist. You can also use the other styles uh, and other brands as long as it's only sodium and water, sodium chloride, and it's sterile. Nothing else. Don't other, don't that other crap in there. Cross-contamination prevention. Comments and stuff, mom taught you. Wash your hands before you handle it. Don't overhandle it. Um, no oral contact or exchange of bodily fluids on your around the piercing. Keep your environment clean, clothing, bedding, towels, anything that may come in contact with. Do not submerge the piercing in bodies of water you cannot control the quality of, which is pretty much everything but your own clean and maintained bathtub. Keep pets away from it. Do not let them sleep in the bed with you, especially those smaller animals that like to sleep up by your face and steal your breath while you're sleeping. Avoid unclean objects. Basically, telephones, headphones, earmuffs, anything that's going to come in contact with the area needs to be disinfected on a regular basis or completely avoided. You want to avoid contact with wet hair. Uh, make sure that you're wearing your hair up and letting it dry before it comes in contact with it. Next, you want to avoid trauma and pressure on the piercing. This piercing does not like to be moved around. It doesn't like to be bumped. It doesn't like to be jostled. And it sure as heck doesn't like to be slept on. So do not sleep on that side. If you have to sleep on that side, you're going to want to go get one of them U-shaped travel pillows, you know, for your neck. Uh, put a clean sock on it and sleep in the center of it every night. Avoid headphones or uh, helmets or uh, I don't know what else. Headphones. Uh, anything that's going to have a lot of trauma or pressure on the piercing is going to cause issues. Also, do not, as I mentioned this earlier, but do not spin, rotate, or play with the jewelry. You're just asking for issues. Now, if you have to wear a mask in the back of the mask or a pair of glasses or goggles and they work around the back, be very cautious when you're removing them because it's easy to hook that jewelry in the back and it does not feel good. The loofahs, throw them away. Do not use them in the shower. They will always catch on it too. If you wear glasses, it's a good idea to make sure that when they are marking the piercing that the back is not going to be in contact with your bows. Now, initially, it will be pierced with a post that's too long for the piercing. This is on purpose to allow for swelling. Uh, we don't want it to be too small because that'll make bigger problems. You do want to downsize. I usually suggest downsizing in, downsizing in four to six weeks. Uh, do go see your piercer. Let them do it. They have the proper tools to do it and the proper methods of doing it. Trying to do it at home can cause more trauma. Then the swelling returns, and then you're, you're having bigger problems because you have the smaller posts on there that can't allow for the swelling. Leaving the longer barbell in can cause migration and other problems, plus it's going to be more likely to get caught on things. So it's a good idea to downsize. Things you want to consider. Uh, if you're planning on additional piercings, especially in the conch area, talk that out with your piercer, discuss that, and plan it out in advance. It's a lot easier to try to come back and make things fit. Are you going on vacation, or are you going to be in a situation where you can't control how clean the environment is? You may want to postpone doing the piercing until you're back and you're going to be back for three to six months. Are you involved in any type of sports or organized activities that will require you to remove or hide the jewelry? Check on this stuff beforehand because there really isn't any special magical retainer that makes piercings disappear. 
um, in removing and putting the jewelry back in and removing and putting the jewelry back in during the healing process is going to cause problems, including possibly infection. Now, if you like this, give us a thumbs up. Let us know if you liked it because we like it. Share because you care. We all care, right? We care. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Hit the notification bell so that you don't miss anything we post. If you like merch, you like swag, you like T-shirts, check out our merch store. Link is in the description. Till next time, here's hoping all your piercing skill of ease and without a single issue. And if you're in the Des Moines, Iowa area, I hope to see you for your body piercing needs in the future. Have a good day, everybody. Uh, take care. Thank you for watching. And check out one of these other videos. They might be helpful, too.